Hey, Weber 85. Uh, just been reviewing the instructions for the Moultrie M880i camera. I uh, haven't put any batteries in it or set it up yet. Really just in some in initial steps of looking over the manual. Uh, quite a lot of uh, different functions that it can do. So over the next few days I'm going to go ahead and put it out uh, behind the house there. This shot a couple weeks ago, but mostly I'm probably going to get some raccoons and squirrels. Give you a good idea of the sharpness of the image. They're building a house back there, and unfortunately I'm sure that has spooked a little bit some of the deer out. So let's take a little bit of a uh, close-up look at the camera before I go ahead and put it outside. So here's our camera. Again, uh, top resolution, 8 meg. And it's supposed to have a uh, motion freeze for, you get sometimes you get that blur. Let's go ahead and unbox this. Nice size, not too big, not too small. Uh, you do have the nice strap that goes through our hooks, our eyelets there, to, to attach it to the tree. Open that up, and it gets to our guts. It does have some quick start instructions. Take a look at that battery compartment. Hit the eject button, and the battery compartment comes out. So let's load those up and insert that right in. And we have our aim. There we go. And our custom start. And we're right on our options. And we have a quick set. And we have a few options we can do on here. Uh, you have our lighted buttons. Nice menu button. And of course our up, down, left, right. Time lapse. Motion and time lapse. Uh, the info strip option, what, what do you want to say on there? Photo video options, memory options, your system options, motion detect. Here's our SD slot. Again, this is a 16 gig. And you heard it click in there. Now we have the camera set to uh, 3840 by 2160. It should, so it should be 8 meg. So we're set for that. Info strip is active. Of course, you get your temperature and I think moon phase, the, the normal things that you get on there. When you turn the camera on out in the field and you set it to the custom start, uh, you really have to tell the camera what you want. You have your three options you have your motion detect, you have your time lapse, and motion detect with time lapse. So that means if it sees something, something triggers it, it'll take a picture. If it's and if you have a time lapse set, say between uh, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., because if you want to see some movement at that time, but if something triggers at 11 a.m., it'll also take that picture. But you have your options, but you really, say on your motion detect, you just can't leave it like this. You actually have to hit your right button to tell it to start. As you can see, there's the word start right there, and then your options. You want to go through and set some of your options up, like your five minute delay. That's the sensitivity, high or low. Uh, if you have grass in the front of it, you want to set it a little bit lower. Uh, I have it set to just one shot right now and a photo. And of course, do not reset my options. But basically, at this point, you have to tell it to start. So you have to hit your right button. And it'll go through its motion detect. It'll tell you five minute delay. It's going to do a one shot uh, photo capture. Yeah, with a with a sense of high goes through that for a couple seconds and then it'll go into telling you that it's actually going to go ahead and start taking a picture within 10 seconds and that's what it's doing right now so it's counting down so you have to tell that uh, to to start like that same thing with your time lapse you actually have to tell the time lapse to go ahead and kick off you don't want to forget that here's the time lapse it was taking a picture every 30 seconds uh, between the time between 9 and 1 and 4 and 7 and here it goes into its delay so it's going to kick off on us so you want to make sure you do that you want to hit that right button nice looking camera got the the bottom land camo on there looks pretty pretty good and this is the invisible the IR and again and when you're in bear country uh, real important uh, just because they will see that and go over there and, and mess with the camera. Sometimes they'll do that anyway, regardless whether it's flashing or not, just bears are curious creatures. 
the flash isn't quite as important as a lot of people make out to be. Uh, let me pick this old camera up here. Uh, this is one of my original cameras that I got. Another Moultrie. You, you can see the size difference. And we're down to about a third of the size. And this one had the, the regular old flash and I used this camera for years behind the house when I had a lot of deer back there really didn't seem to bother those deer and again whether it's because it was suburban deer versus the you know the your woods deer but I don't think the flash matters as much to deer as the companies kind of kind of push I mean, again they've got their agendas they got their sales quotas to make use this for years you know I had absolute fabulous uh, deer out there and they would stay throughout the picture this would be flashing and flashing and flashing and, and the and the deer would be there uh, great nine pointers eight pointers seven pointers a bunch of doe and they would just be out there all evening consuming uh, the feed that I put out there again never hunted those deer in the back uh, never, all I did is shoot them with the old camera here uh, but they still came in again with this with this normal big camera flashing all the time at them I did put this little camo ish paint on there uh, did that and it was black to start with as, as most of the cameras were. So I'll meet you outside. We'll go ahead and put this up on a tree. I have the camera out. I'm about to set it up. But just a couple tips for some of you new guys who haven't done this yet. And if you hear some construction noise in the background, that was that new house that I was talking about. <clears throat> but there's a couple options for you. Usually I do about this height on deer. Uh, but if you do it like this, and you have a lot of swaying branches, bushes in the background, uh, you may get some false images, images with nothing on them. You know, a nice picture of uh, uh, the scenery in the background. Uh, but I will do that uh, a lot of the times. You can go ahead and put it up high. Maybe put a little bit of a stick behind it so it's angled down uh, to the spot that you want uh, to view. Uh, that's going to give you a little bit less of the false images. Bear country, it's going to be a little bit less noticeable for them up high. And uh, turkey, uh, if you go ahead and do turkey, I like to do it way down here because, of course, your turkeys are on the ground like this, and uh, it, it gives you a nice shot of those turkeys uh, when their camera's uh, down here. So uh, that's about it. I want to choose a, one of the bigger trees that you can find. Uh, in, in the, in the spot. You don't want a real thin tree because then if the wind blows your camera is going to sway and it may cause some of those false images. So you want to uh, choose a nice big one like this. The sun in this spot really kind of comes up here and goes across there. So I like to put the camera away from the sun. You don't want to have that camera facing directly into the sun if you can, if you can avoid it because you get a lot of glare on that lens. Uh, it tends to be a little bit washed out. Uh, just like this would, this would look like, as you can see, just a little bit too bright to tell a lot of the details in the background. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one probably up about this height right here, uh, shooting right over in this area. Uh, Walmart was kind enough to have some uh, acorn uh, rage attractant on sale for three bucks, end of the season stuff. So let me go ahead and get this set up and turn it on. Now I have it set up, it's about five and a half feet up. Got a little bit of a broken stick behind it, so it faces down a little bit into the spot that I want, want to pick. Again, that's your choice whether you want to do that or not. Uh, one of the other things, if you have branches, uh, a little bit of branch in front of it like this, uh, you want to make sure you trim those away because it's going to mess up your autofocus on here and you get a little bit of the swaying back and forth. That's also going to give you some, some more false images. So uh, just a few things to, to help you get some better pictures. Just about ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Well, here I am just re back in reviewing some of the pictures that I took over about the last 10 days or so. Unfortunately, didn't get any deer to come in. I tried my best. I put apples out there, had some corn, had that acorn rage, uh, had some salt out there, some uh, chestnut salt, and tried. And I think really that house over there, the construction is really really kind of messing them up a little bit. Plus, it's the end of the season here. They've been shot at for four months. So, uh, I, could, I could see that, that we didn't get anything in. I uh, really wanted to, but we still was able to evaluate the camera. Uh, here it is. 
Again, Moultrie 880i Gen 2. And the camera is, it's, it's not uh, something that just came out, but I really just wanted to give it my opinion on it because it's at the point where that price point is really starting to drop. Normally this camera started out about 150 160 uh, I got it for 80 or actually less than 80 uh, So it's at a point where it's becoming pretty affordable if you wanted to pick up one or two of those uh, and put it out there and you might be interested and still want to know whether it's a quality camera or not. I'm going to go through some pictures here with you in, in a couple seconds, but my initial review is uh, I really like what I got out of it. Uh, the 8 meg picture is very sharp. Uh, the 6 meg picture is still very sharp. As you start to go 4 uh, and 2 and below, uh, they start losing a little bit. And with the size of the cards, I got, I've got SD cards sitting all over my desk here. It's how cheap they are these days. You put a 16 gig card in there, you get, I don't know, uh, I'd have to look in the book, but you, you get so many uh, pictures available on that SD card, there's no reason why you'd want to set it below uh, the 8 or the high quality, or the enhanced, I think they call it on here. Uh, so you want to use that. I did use the time lapse and burst mode and uh, nighttime, daytime shots. I uh, got some squirrels and foxes. Uh, one dog, neighbor's dog, I was able to get in there. Uh, so we're going to go through that right now and take a look at it. Uh, but I would say if you can get this, cam uh, if you can get this camera for 90 and under, uh, 85, I would definitely say uh, I recommend it. I'm taking this in January, beginning of February. Uh, this is when the cameras, everything is on sale. This is the time you want to get it. You don't want to wait. Um, and there's really not going to be that many advancements in cameras. You say, well, I want to wait till the next advancement comes out. It's an 8 meg camera that takes great pictures. I still want to get some good quality stuff for value pricing. Uh, so that's that's what I try to do. Sometimes I go a little bit too far on some of the things, but uh, I definitely uh, certainly recommend uh, the Moultrie 8880i, and this is the Gen 2. Uh, there's no firmware updates for it. I would say if you set it on uh, five minutes and you have it on enhanced, you can keep it out there a long, long, long time, and you're going to get some really, really good pictures out of it. Our first picture here, 8 meg picture at 3840 by. 2160. Uh, pretty good clarity. Uh, it's one me bringing some uh, feed out, some more food. And I actually zoomed in on this and you can see the wildlife brunch on the bag. Those letters are real nice and clear even though they're zoomed in. Uh, nighttime picture uh, with the fox in there. And it's looking pretty good for pretty good clarity for at night. Of course you're going to get black and white. Here we go down to the 4 megapixel. Uh, still not bad at all as far as our, uh, the quality. I think the Fox looks just as good at 4 meg. And another one of uh, Mr. Fox. Still looking pretty good. Uh, 2688 by 1512. Uh, we had a little bit of a snow. And now we're going to go into our 2 meg. And you do start to lose some quality. Those leaves start to kind of mold together. Had our neighbor's dog in. And the Fox right after it. And I think he's checking out some of those salt blocks right now. And we're going into our 8 meg and into our HD video. It takes one picture and then goes right into this HD video, 1280 by 720 at 15 frames a second. Uh, not too bad. You're going to get a little bit of choppiness out of it. It's not your normal 30 frames a second, but uh, not too, too bad. We'll get into a nighttime photo of a fox, an 8 meg photo, and a pretty good quality on that fox. And then him coming in and uh, checking out that cherry pie, cherry chocolate pie that I put out there. Uh, he's interested, but eh, as foxes are, they're, uh, they're going to be cautious. They don't know if it's a trap or not. And uh, it's not, it's just some free food for him. One 8 meg photo, pretty good quality on that. And then here he is later, 11.30 at night. Uh, looking over at the camera, there is nothing there. There's nothing that he could be looking at in that direction except for the camera. Uh, so he still wants to come in and check that pie out. I know uh, the next morning half of it was gone and uh, I'm sure he enjoyed that. And again, I don't harass or trap those foxes back there. And one of me uh, walking out there just to see what happened with the pie. Again, half of it was gone. 
and uh, just me taking a look around out there at what's going on. We're going to go into burst mode next. This is our three shot burst and that's nice when you have a buck out there and it turns its head. You can really see what the antlers are, what how big the antlers are. So three shot burst and again me walking around out there. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Uh, next let's go ahead and get into the time lapse. Here's the software that you can download from the Moultrie website, uh, Plot Stalker, for your time lapse. And it's go out to your file that contains all your photos. Uh, it pulls them all in, and we can click play here, and it'll go through at one time, all the way up to eight times. Uh, you can pause it any time you want. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't have too much going on on my time lapse. I ran it for from about uh, ten to. 10 to 1 or so, and uh, ba basically the, the squirrel's running around out there a little bit. I'm going through it pretty quick over here, and let me, we can stop it. Uh, you want to slide it up to any of the particular frames you want to see, advance it in time. Uh, let's go back a little bit here. Alright, you can see me in the back there walking in and taking a picture about every 30 seconds. So, it was pretty far off in the back. Uh, this, uh, let me advance, or go back a couple frames. And there, I'm about um, almost 60 feet away from the camera. Uh, so you can see, that it's pretty good if you wanted to zoom in a little bit. Uh, say if that actually was a deer in the back and you wanted to get, take a good look at it. As you can see, you can zoom in and uh, we're not really losing too much on our quality. Advance it another frame. 30 seconds later, I'm um, coming out with a little bit more corn to put out and clearing some of the leaves away from the uh, salt blocks that I have out there, the salt hockey pucks. And a bit of a battery consumer, uh, but if you'd like to use it, and if you put a solar panel on there, I think you'd be in good shape with that. You could certainly run it. So I hope you enjoyed it, uh, got something out of it, uh, a couple of those tips and tricks that I set out there, and uh, I'm going to apologize about the, uh, the level of the sound. I tried to cut out some of that saw noise back there when they're running the circular saw. So again, I would certainly recommend this camera uh, in the 80 to, 80 to 85, 90 price range, and of course anything below that. And again, I got it for 78 off of Jet.com. Uh, pretty good darn deal. Uh, so this is White Rook 85 signing out off the Delmarva Peninsula today.